In this video, you'll learn all about protein for type 2 diabetics. In more detail, here's what you can expect to learn. First, we'll talk about what are the effects of protein on type 2 diabetics. Then, we'll, we'll talk about specifically blood sugar. How does protein affect blood sugar levels in diabetics? As well as, how much protein do you need? Do you need a little bit, a moderate amount, a lot? Uh, we'll also uh, explain exactly where can you get that protein from food, as well as supplements. What about different kinds of protein for diabetics, like uh, hemp protein, rice protein, pea protein, and of course, whey protein, the most well-studied of the proteins. Before we jump in, who am I? My name is Igor. I run an online personal training company that specializes in type 2 diabetics called Fitness Solutions Plus. As well, I've been a personal trainer since 2006, and I've delivered over 400 wellness presentations for many of Canada's largest corporations, including the University of Toronto, IBM, Bosch, American Express, Investors Group, and others. If um, I'm also the author of the Amazon best-selling book called Type 2 Diabetes Reversal Secrets, Four Simple Steps to Lower Blood Sugar in One Month Without Medications. I'm offering you a free chapter from the book titled 10 Diabetes Myths That Are Harming Your Health. If you want to download a PDF version of that chapter, just visit www.fitnesssolutionsplus.ca slash yt-diabetes or check out the link in the description below. Now, let's jump in. Why do type 2 diabetics need protein? Well, there are many, many reasons. One of the most important nutritional factors as far as blood sugar control goes is just calories. Uh, the lower that you eat your calories, the lower of a chance you have to eat things that aren't good for you. So by eating more protein, it helps you feel fuller longer, thereby reducing your food intake the rest of the day. So it helps you lower your caloric intake throughout the day without deliberately trying to do so. You just naturally feel like eating less food. As well, no surprise, it helps you build muscle. And be because diabetics are at a higher risk for osteopenia and osteoporosis, it helps you build bone mass. These are just three of the reasons. There are many other reasons. Now, how does protein affect blood sugar in diabetics? Let's talk about the short term and the long term. In the short term, things like meat, fish, and seafood, they are low on the glycemic index. Now, if you've never heard of the glycemic index, all it is is a measurement of how fast any given food raises your blood sugar. Okay, so it's a, it's a measurement of speed, uh, the speed of blood sugar rise in response to any given food. So by themselves, uh, things like meat, fish, and seafood, uh, things that are high in protein, they don't really raise blood sugar levels very much. They raise them a little bit, but not a lot. Uh, so that's still in the short term. And that's by themselves. In combination with, with, with a mixed meal, like carbohydrates, like, like bread or pasta or rice or potatoes, they decrease, they decrease both the proteins, decrease both the extent and the speed of the increase. So even when you're having foods that are not diabetic friendly, combining not diabetic friendly foods with diabetic friendly foods like proteins, like meat, fish, and seafood will really help you decrease the, the rise, the speed and the extent of the blood sugar rise. So that's the effect of protein in the short term. What about the effect of protein on your blood sugar levels in the long term? Well, here's a study titled, Effects of High Protein Diets on Body Weight, Glycemic Control, Blood Lipids, and Blood Pressure in Type 2 di Diabetes. And here's what they found. The difference between diabetics on a high protein diet and a low protein diet of the same calories is 0.52% in favor of high protein diets. In other words, these people have an A1C that's 0.52% lower than people on a low protein diet. Um, so how high is high? Well, the high protein diet as it, it stands at about 28% of their daily calories and the low protein diet is at about uh, 18, 17 and a half percent of their daily calories. And this is just in all diabetics. If you're a normal weight diabetic, things are even more exaggerated. In normal weight diabetics, protein plays an even larger role than in uh, than in overweight diabetics. I recorded an entire very thorough 12 and a half minute video um, on that exact topic. If you're a normal weight diabetic, you'll want to check it out on your screen right now or in the description below. Now, hopefully you're convinced that diabetics should be having more protein uh, than they typically are. But the question is how much protein do they do they should should they eat? Um, so here's the the table. The uh, protein requirements depend on three main factors. One, your activity levels. Are you sedentary? Are you doing cardio only, strength training only, or cardio plus strength training? Your age, are you over 60 or under 60? 
and your uh, your, your body weight. The heavier you are, the more protein you need. So if you want, either take a look at this chart, pause the video right now to do the calculations, or if you want, visit this website. You can plug in your body weight and it will tell you how much protein you need. Um, and you can check that out on your screen right now or in the description below. So now you know uh, that protein is important. You know how to test your blood sugar levels. You know how much you should eat, but what foods are good protein sources? Well, let's talk about that. Protein-rich foods for diabetic patients. Here are what are called the grade A protein sources. The reason they are grade A is because they contain more than 30 grams of protein per serving. Things like uh, lean, uh, lean beef, shrimps, uh, chicken or turkey, uh, whey protein, tuna. These are all examples. They're not exclusive. There are others of grade A protein. Grade B protein is anything between 10 and 30 grams of protein per serving. Some examples would be things like chickpeas, Greek yogurt, but not regular yogurt, lentils, uh, beans. Um, and these are just some examples. Grade C protein are things that have 10 grams of, pro, uh, of serving per protein, uh, of, of per serve of protein per serving or or less. These are things people typically say are high protein sources, but really they're not. Cheese is a very poor uh, source of protein. Uh, it's a good source of carbs, it's a good source of fats, but it's not a great source of protein. One slice of cheese is only about five or six grams. One medium egg is six grams of protein. One glass of milk is nine grams of protein. Uh, there's not a single vegetable that's a high protein vegetable. All vegetables are below five grams of protein. And nuts and seeds are very poor protein sources. Um, a, a handful of nuts, doesn't matter which nut, whether it's almonds, cashews, pistachios, walnuts, etc. They're all about five or six grams per handful. So not a heck of a lot. And if you're wondering what about this food or what about that food that's not listed in this uh, presentation, um, just go to this website as well plug in the food that you're that you're wondering about and it'll tell you how much uh, protein there is in a serving of that food. Again, you can check that out on your screen right now or in the description below. So these are foods as foods. What about protein as supplements for diabetics? Well, there is typically egg protein, collagen, hemp protein, rice protein, etc. There is not a shred of research on any of these for diabetics specifically. What about pea protein? There is only a single study of pea protein and that's not in people, that is in diabetic mice. So we really don't know how any of these proteins affect diabetic people. The one we do really know about is whey protein for diabetic patients. Um, here's one study titled, High Energy Breakfast Based on Whey Protein Reduces Body Weight, Postprandial Glycemia, and HbA1c in Type 2 Diabetes, to clarify, postprandial glycemia means how high your blood sugar goes within one to three hours after a meal. And here's what they did in this study. The researchers recruited 56 type two diabetics and divided them into three different groups. Group number one had a breakfast that contained 42 grams of whey protein. Group number two had 42 grams of protein that was not a whey protein. And group number three had a low protein breakfast of only 17 grams of protein, but the same calories. And here is what happened after three months. All three groups lowered the HbA1c by different amounts. Group number one that had 42 grams of whey protein, they lowered their A1c by an impressive and respectable 0.89%. Group number two that had 42 grams of a protein that's not whey also had a respectable, a moderately, uh, moderately good drop of 0.6%. Group number three only dropped them by 0.36%. So not that impressive, which tells us that whey protein is probably very, very good for type two diabetics. And if you're wondering why, why did whey protein cause such a such an impressive drop in HbA1c? Well, here are a few different mechanisms. One, whey protein increases insulin secretion. Insulin is a hormone that lowers blood sugar. So if there is, um, if it helps the pancreas create more of it or release more of it, uh, that can help you lower blood sugar. Another one is increase satiety and therefore lower food intake. In other words, if you eat a bigger breakfast, it makes you want to eat less at lunch and dinner, so you eat less calories overall. And if you're wondering, I go to a health food store and there are a million kinds of whey protein. What's the best whey protein? Well, the nice thing about whey protein is that they're all virtually identical. As long as your whey protein has more than 25 grams of protein per serving and less than two grams of sugar per serving, they're all basically the same whether it has artificial sweeteners or is sweetened with stevia or xylitol or erythritol, that doesn't matter. Whether it has probiotics or not, doesn't matter. 
whether it has any kinds of vitamins and minerals, doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is high enough protein, low enough carbs. So 25 grams or more of protein and less than two grams of sugar. In my opinion, first worry about getting adequate protein. If you're below what's necessary based on your age, activity levels, and weight, just worry about getting the, any kind of protein, even if it's rice or pea or hemp, etc. After you're getting um, adequate protein, then worry about getting the right kind of protein, ideally, again, based on this research, ideally whey, okay? Um, and so again, if you want to get a free chapter of, from my book, Type Diabetes Universal Secrets, uh, just visit the website www.fitnesssolutionsplus.ca slash yt dash diabetes or, uh, or click the link in the description below.